Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to a short stop on pool. This week for rack of the week number five, we're going to go back in time about two years, a little over two years. I ran this rack in January 28th of 2019. And this is before the carbon fiber shaft, before the extension, with a different stance, and a water pump elbow. But we're not going to talk about those things too much. I was kind of interested to see that I had pretty much the same rhythm, even though I'm shooting with a much shorter cue. But it was interesting to look at this rack, and I'm not sure what I was thinking as I was shooting. And so now here I am two years later, second-guessing what I did two years ago. And I think there's some interesting lessons to be learned, so let's check out the rack. I have a slight inside angle on the brake shot. The brake ball is a long way from the pocket, and the cue ball is a long way from the brake ball. So for that, I'm just shooting low on the cue ball, and I'm just trying to make sure I pocket that ball. Uh, I would have been happy with a stun to center table. As it is, the draw uh, kept it from scratching and went to the side rail, and now I'm uh, golden. This is a real common layout. There's a little bit of clustering in the center of the table. The balls are mostly open. The three and the seven block the corner pocket on the right, and the two ball blocks the corner pocket on the left. So my goal is to remove the two, seven, and three to open up those lanes for the other balls. I have a potential break ball on the nine. I don't have a side pocket key ball, but the five ball is a pretty good key ball. The 15 could also be a good key ball. So I'm thinking about that. There's also just one trouble ball in that up table six, but it's in a really good spot because I can get almost any angle on that six, and there's going to be a way for me to play position for the five as my key ball. So I'm not concerned about the six right now at all. So I shot this seven and ended up against the ten. I really don't understand that shot. I'm not sure what I was thinking. Perhaps I was trying to come over for the two ball I don't know I'm fine with leaving the one ball alone for now I may need that later to maneuver but now my only shot is this nine ball and I'm going to disturb both of my potential break shots so not a good idea but you need to pocket the ball to keep shooting so and I got pretty fortunate there that the 12 ball came back and that could be a break ball and on top of that the nine ball got developed that might also be a key ball for my break shot Let's pause for a second and take a look at the layout here. You can see I'm already getting down to shoot the 15 ball. It's almost an instinctual decision. But I actually have four shots here. I could shoot the 9 in the side, but I'm jacked up for that shot. I could shoot the 6 ball, but it's a long shot. But I could shoot the 14 ball on the side as well. The reason why I'm going to the 15, it's kind of obvious because it's more the more clustered area of the table. So we want to shoot, eliminate balls there. But it's also a process of elimination. I know that the 12 is my break ball. The 9 and 5 are going to be my key ball and key 2 ball. I've already decided to use the 6 ball to set up for my key balls. And that's 4 balls out of the 11 on the table. So it's a process of elimination. So obviously I'm going to be looking in this other direction. Some players might want to crash into these balls and kind of move them and open them up more. But it's a much higher percentage play to maneuver around the balls. And the way you do that is by looking at, as I mentioned before, lanes to pockets. So we already noticed that the 8 and the 10 ball both go in the lower left corner pocket, but they won't go until the 2 and the 11 are removed. Now the 11 ball doesn't really have anywhere to go, but it could go in the bottom right after the 15 ball is removed. So the 15 ball is always the correct shot here because it opens up a lane for the 11 ball. Okay, let's return to my real-time commentary where you'll hear me alluding to these ideas. So now... I want to deal with the 8 and the 10 ball. The 8 and the 10 don't go until the 2 is gone or and the, looks like the 11 ball at the bottom left corner of the rack. So that's my concern. And I think what I'm, yeah, I'm going to shoot the 1 ball. The reason why I'm shooting the 1 is I can play position for more than 1 ball. I can get a shot on the 2, the 11, or the 14. I'm hoping for a shot on the 11 because it's easier to go from the 11 to the 2 than it is to go from the 2 to the 11. So a shot on the 11 is ideal. And now I'm doing the same thing. I'm playing position for the 2 ball and the 14. So what do I do? The first thing is look at the 14. It's going to be best to shoot the 2 ball first, though, because that opens up the pocket for the 8 and the 10. 
So now use the 2 ball to get on the 14. Roll forward from the 14, and I'll have the 8 and the 10. Now, you can see that what the way the balls have developed, I'm pretty much locked in to an end pattern where my last three shots are going to be 6, 9, 5. And that's fine, but you, you need to have that in mind right now. You have, to, you have to know what you're doing so that you can play the, the proper angle on the 10. Now, I've got a slight angle on the 8. It's probably not ideal. It looks like I have a little bit too much angle. And it's going to be real difficult to go to the bottom rail and around the break shot. Yeah, so I just try and hold it as best I can, knowing that even with a thin cut like I have on this 10, I can get on that 6 ball. You saw me point at the 6 ball right there. I, I want an angle just past the parallel line. That's what you want to think in terms of that parallel line. If you can imagine if I'm on the inside of that parallel line, now I've got a tough job to hold the cue ball on the side rail for the nine ball and the five. But if I get just past the parallel line, I can go to the head rail and come two rails to get positioned on the nine, or I can draw to the side rail and it's easy. And if I, if I play to get past that parallel line and, and I really overshoot my position, I have a straight drawback, or I can bounce off the left side rail to get positioned on the nine. So that's what you're looking for when you're playing uh, position for that up table ball. And this is ideal. I've got a slight angle on the nine ball, so I can either hold it to get an angle on the five or bounce the cue ball off the rail. Um, I choose in this case to bounce it, and I think that's a safer route. How many times have I tried to hold the ball and you end up straight in on the five and you can't get on your break shot? So you want to make sure you get an angle on these rail shots uh, when they're, you're using them for a cue ball. More angle is better than less because you can always hold it or go across the table and come back if you get a really sharp angle. And I actually got a little bit too much angle here, so I'm spinning this to try and hold it. And, yeah, cue ball came too far. Now, this is the type of thing that ends runs because I'm way too shallow on my break shot. I'm too shallow on my break shot because I had too much angle on my cue ball. I should have taken more time. It's really important when you're shooting your K2 ball and your cue ball. You've got to take a lot of time and make sure you get it just right because... Getting too shallow on your break shot can end the run real easily. This is a low percentage break shot. I'm almost straight in. I need to use some inside English and elevate my cue a little bit to get the cue ball to slide over and hit that corner ball. And I'm hoping for the other corner ball, the eight ball, to uh, bounce off the side rail and give me a shot in that left corner pocket. And that's probably the only shot I could get. Though if you can hit the top side of the five, sometimes that will carry them off the ball next to it towards the bottom rail and you can get a shot on that ball. From this point, obviously I'm playing a match, I would play a safety. If I'm trying to run balls, I'm going to bank that eight in the side because it's a natural, very natural two rail position out of the corner into the bottom of the rack. You've got to hit the shot hard with some running English, left English in this case. Hopefully that cue ball will come off the bottom of the rack and you'll get another shot. And I was fortunate enough to make it and come up with a couple of shots. So here it looks like I've got the one ball. Yeah, I'm looking to see. Probably have the one ball. But uh, that's for another rack for another time. So wouldn't you rather have a wide open rack like the beginning of this video? So this is what you have to deal with when you end up too shallow on your break shot. That's how important it is to get the, just the right angle on your K2 and your key ball. So that was a little taste of opening lanes to pockets and attention to detail. Please don't judge my fundamentals too harshly. That was two years ago. I'm shooting a lot better than that now, and I'm anticipating better things to come as I pursue my goal of running 200 balls. Thank you for watching. As always, head over to shortstoponpool.com, and I'll see you next time on Rack of the Week.